Hey, good morning, you guys. It is Saturday morning, the 13th, I think. Yeah. 13th or 14th? Well, 13th, I think. So Vicky's trying to find the perfect spot, but we have a lot of shadows and it's kind of overcasty, so it's bright, but then it's shadowy underneath the gazebo here. So Vicky's trying to find the, the perfect spot and now the flies are showing up. Anywho, so I hope you guys are having a great Saturday. We've got uh, some really exciting stuff that I would love to tell you about, but I have to wait a little bit longer. Um, but in the meantime, I've got some really good questions here. Uh, maybe good as good questions as I've had for a while. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I hope you guys got a chance to see our uh, live last night. This morning we posted on, uh, on YouTube, Dad's Senior Moment, about uh, issues with the base plates and the screw heads and that kind of thing. So hopefully you guys saw that. That was on YouTube this morning. And... Um, Anyway, so let's just uh, jump right into it, unless there's something that uh, we need to go over here. Uh, so, first question I have is Richie from New Zealand. He says, the 90 degree bit I used for the background wasn't as good as I hoped it would be. It has quite a wide blade on it, and I couldn't get the results that you show. Um, so I went straight up and down trying to get the dimple effect that you use so what he means by that is um and, and i didn't know this till i don't know probably about 10 or 15 years ago all 90 degree bits just because it says it's a 90 degree angle uh quarter inch shake that doesn't mean it's the same as the ones that we use so let me show you the difference between three different 90 degree bits this is the one that we use currently which is, it's 90 degree, but it's only quarter inch shank, but it's only quarter inch cutting flute. This one is a 3 8 it's 90 degree, but this is a 3 8 cutting flute. This is a 90 degree, but it's a 3 quarter inch cutting flute. So you could see that, and I was gonna bring a sign out here, but this will fit, even though it's a 90 degree, the same degree as these, it will fit in smaller spaces without going really wide. And so what was happening with Richie, he had a 90 degree bit. And again, he's in New Zealand, so he doesn't have our bits. But he was, I think he was using like a 3 8 Yeah, he was using a 3 8 So this would not fit in some places that this would fit, even though it's a 90 degree bit. It took me a long time to, you know, I was carving signs and I thought if it had the right degree on it, they were all the same. But it's definitely not. So you definitely, when you're searching for bits, if you're not using our bits, look for, and you want to do what we do, look for a 90 degree bit or 60 degree whatever it is but no wider than the the shank of the bit which is quarter inch it will allow you to go deeper and fit in tighter spots and this is a, a common mistake most people say oh well you know i've got a 90 degree bit thinking it's the same as the 90 that we use and generally speaking you won't find this probably this kind of bit in a box store or even a hardware store this probably a, a woodworking supply is the only place you're going to find these beside the fact that we have them, but we use a man of bits. But anyway, and these are, uh, the, it's not that these don't have their place. If I'm doing a big sign and I'm taking out a lot of material, I would definitely use one of these. In fact, you guys have probably seen me use them on, um, on YouTube channel. These aren't a man of bits. They're bits I've had for years and years. You can see I've ground them down a little bit. When they get dull, I've kind of sharpened them up. But anyway, so I wanted you guys to understand, especially if you're new, the difference between a, di a, a bit that says it's a, the same degree as what we use, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the same. Brad is here from Australia. Hey, Brad. How are you, buddy? Alexson. Just saw a picture of you and your little doggy with the cone. Scott Oldroy. Scott Oldroy. He's in the I UK. I carving in the middle one with the middle one, and that's all I had. Yeah, Scott's over in the UK. Yeah, and that that's the thing. Most people that don't really do this, they don't know. They think if it's a 90 degree, it's a 90 degree, but that's not the case. Well, I think Gus just, Gus Oviedo, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Said morning. Just got off a terrible day at work. Well, we hope oh. we can make it a little bit better for you there, Gus. Sorry about that, Gus. Brent Ford from Canada. Wow, we got some lots of international people. Thanks for joining us, guys. Well, normally on our Facebook lives, we're at six o'clock in the evening. So you, have, those of you that are international, it's the middle of the night or early a.m. I suppose. Mark Hallis, how's it going? Enjoying a beautiful day in Rhode Island. It is gorgeous here. It's kind of overcast. Today would be a good day. It's hardly no wind. I wish I was on the lake, but the next week. Anyway, all right. So um, another question that was really a good question. This was off of YouTube um, from a UK subscriber, and uh, his name is Dave. He says, I have a question. If you carve two identical word-only signs, no artwork, one with inset letters, one with outset letters, would you charge different prices for each? Uh, normally, if I'm doing small signs, that would not be the case. When I was carving signs um, up in Oatman, generally I went by the size of the board. Six by 24, anything I could get on there within reason. If I could fit it on there, whether it was inset letters, outset letters, I let the, the customer pick what they liked best. Most of the time it was outset letters because they're more unique. Most of the time, no, but that's not always the case. For instance, this was a sign that I sold all the time up in Oatman, and I sold tons of them. Now, this has got uh, artwork on it. It's got a little beer mug, but don't pay attention to that. This was a, one of those funny stock signs that I sold all the time. But there's a lot of wording on there. If I had to cut that outset, it would have taken me probably three times longer than if it just cutting it inset. So in most cases, everything okay? Yeah, it's fine. In most cases, I would, I would not charge extra for doing them outset letters. But if there is a lot of outset letters, then yes. I'm going to bring it to me when we're doing the thing. Sure. Because so I keep zooming in and screwing up the screen. Okay. All right. So are, are, can they see that, no, you I think? That oh, okay. So if it's, a, if, if it's a case where there's a lot of outset letters and the dispar uh, disparity is, is that, the, is that a word? The difference in time, let's just say it that way, would be a lot from making it outset letters to inset letters, then I would consider charging a little bit extra because there's a lot more time involved. Generally speaking, no on the small signs. Here's another, uh, an, another example. This is one that I made a long time ago, and it's a fairly good size sign, and, but it's got a lot of lettering on it if I was to make that outset letters it would have taken me a lot longer generally if it's not very many letters the difference between inset and outset is not worth charging extra for and I just uh, kind of consider it uh, kind of a plus if they want if they like inset letters better in most cases they like outset letters but anyway so that so that would be the caveat to that is if there's a lot of letters involved, then definitely um, I would probably charge more. Uh, but if it's a small sign and there's not a whole lot of wording going, I charge the same for inset letters as outset letters. So, uh, but it's a really great question. I, I don't I don't get that kind of question very often. Here comes the breeze. Uh oh, what happened to my sign cover? They fell on the ground. All right, so let's move on to sign covers of the day. If you guys have questions on any of this, obviously you know how to get a hold of me. Or you can ask right here, right now, because we're here. So, sign covers of the day. We've got five more good ones. Uh, wind's kicking up. Yeah. Greg Clark. Nice collage of signs that Greg is doing. Sorry, guys, I'm having issues with zooming in, so this is what we're doing. Very nice work, Greg. I don't, I can't remember how long Greg's been carving, but um, those are nice. Very nice. Caught it, kinda. <laughs> Justin Hellickson. He's here. 
Justin what? here? Another. This is awesome. Uh, Justin is just a master at making these flags. I just love his work. He does the waving flags, obviously a lot of resin work. Are those patches? Or is that carved? I, you know, you'd have to ask Justin if he's here. It's kind of hard. Are those carved or is, are those patches? Gosh, that's nice. Just beautiful stuff, Justin. I can imagine you stay busy just doing flags. Berta, Susan, hey, Berta. Uh, Stephen Rally, uh, Rally New. I'm probably um, really wiping that out. But anyway, first sign, 11 by 14 oak. This is for his son and daughter-in-law. Uh, oak's not that hard to, or not that easy to carve. I'm <laughs> messing with oak right now. But uh, beautiful sign. Great job for a first sign. Darren Ferguson. Wow. Another beautiful sign. I've had so many people ask me if I can make these uh, military logo templates, and I can't. It really is. There's too many pieces. They just fall apart. They just fall apart. So my suggestion, if you guys are going to do a lot of these, is um, just print them and figure out a good transfer method. We've done tons of stuff on That's transfer method. Transfer method. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Great job, Darren. And last, Chris Wright. Chris Wright is, uh, this is his first sign, or one of his first signs. So, um, terrific job, Chris. And I actually, I have, uh, I've got another one of his that, um, that or another one that he sent me. And uh, oh. he's gotten even better. Justin says they're just final stickers from a guy that does car wraps. I think you, uh, I thank you for the kind words. I really enjoy doing them. So those are stickers, and it's yeah. under resin, right? You resin them. Yeah, it, it yeah, definitely it looks like resin. And I know he does the three-dimensional wavy right. stuff too. So awesome Scott, job, all guys! Says, I love carving oak, but it's murder on the bits. Yeah, it's tough on the bits. Um, I'm going through that that gamble oak sign that I'm doing my sh new shop sign, man. That thing is uh, is really gnarly. It has got so many. It's it's crazy gnarly. I didn't realize all of the issues that I'm having. You guys will see more of those issues on Monday and then on Wednesday. Tessa asked a question up here. Sorry, Tessa. Yeah. What's up, Tessa? Hold on, I gotta find it. it Gusted, I just learned the different 90 degree bit sizes. Awesome. Excellent. Oh, Tessa said, uh, what do you call the thing you put on the bottom of the router base to cut a board design like the camper and what size? Okay, so talking about those. the template guide. It's okay. either called a template guide or it could be called a, a guide bushing. And it, it's uh, something that goes on the on the bottom of your stock router base. It doesn't fit on our router bases because it has to have a, a machine step in there so that it fits flush on the bottom of the plate. But it's called either a template guide or a guide bushing that allows the spiral upcut bit to go down through it, and then a little step on there will follow the the pattern for cutting your shapes. We've got tons of videos on that. If you need videos on it, anybody, then let me know for sure. It's like it's getting darker. The sun went behind the clouds. Yeah, it definitely is uh, overcast today, but it's beautiful. Sorry. Oh, um, Bob Hatch just jumped in. Hey, Bob, how are you back in Freiburg, Maine? Uh, another thing that I'm getting a lot of questions on, and I meant to bring it out, that I'll probably talk about on Monday, is the channel search. So if you guys, especially if you're brand new, if you're looking for a specific video or a specific group of videos that have to do with a, a category or an issue or um, certain topics, be sure and use the channel search. So go to, uh, go to our channel, Old Day 100, and then uh, there's a bottom window over to the side, not at the top, but at the side. I generally have my printout here. You just turn the flashlight on. <laughs> oh, that, uh, that was the flashlight? That's a flashlight. Yeah, now it's off. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to make it brighter. So, uh, yeah, definitely go and see the channel search. If you have any questions on that, email me and I'll send you a link to a video where I talked about the channel search because I have a channel search videos on just on a PC, on a computer, and then I also have them on a smartphone. 
uh, and it's a little bit different, kind of the same, but a little bit different. Scott Oler said the the oak shield I'm working on has gone through three CNC bits so far. Hopefully wow. One more needed. Wow. Gosh. Yeah, Tessa, you can buy those things in a kit. It's I think we got the the things at Harbor Freight. The they have them at Harbor Freight. I bought uh, the ones that we use. We bought a kit like. 20 30 years ago porter cable but you have to make sure that whatever ones you got are the right size for your router because they make them different for different size holes so make sure measure the hole on your router base and make sure whichever template guides you buy uh, is made for that size hole a lot of them are the same but there are some that are different all right, boys and girls, that is it. We are going to let you carry on with your weekend. You'll see another video tomorrow morning, and uh, all next week you're seeing multiple videos on YouTube uh, every day, I think. I think we're posting like 10 videos a week now. Um, but if you have more questions, any questions on this or anything, keep those questions coming. Eric at makeawoodsign.com. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. We love you. And um, no live tomorrow, but there will be a video on YouTube. And we will see you live here, 6 o'clock, Monday evening, 6 p.m. Pacific. I'm out of words. Love you guys. Bye see ya. Guys. Bye. Have a great weekend.